There seems to be quite a fine line between smartphone fast charging and battery longevity. Today, we will be testing out that theory in terms of charging rates, wattage, speed, and most importantly, heat dissipation varying from 20 watts all the way up to 120 watt charging. First up, we have the slowest charging phone of the bunch, the Motorola Edge S with the smallest block here at just 20 watts and the largest battery at 5,000 milliamps. The S21 Ultra also has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery and a 20 5 watt block the vivo x60 pro plus has a 55 watt block and 4200 milliamp power cell the oppo reno 5 pro 5g has a 65 watt block and a 4350 milliamp power battery and the vivo iq 7 has the largest charging block at 120 watts and the smallest battery at 4000 milliamps is there a difference in terms of heat dissipation between 20 watt charging 120 watt charging and everything in between and if there is then what's the sweet spot this is technic and without further ado let's find out before hitting start on the timer phone on the right hand side, we're checking the temps of each device before we plug them into charge. This is pretty much just room temperature, hence why they're so similar. After each interval that will change and then the hottest temp will stick to peak. It'll be really interesting going forward to see what happens. After seven minutes, we have 8% on the Motorola, 10% on the Samsung, 19% on the Vivo, 21 on the Oppo and 33 on the iQ. Now the interval has changed. As you can see, top right hand corner, the hottest being the iQ, coolest being the Motorola Edge S. And just to let you guys know, I have disabled all forms of battery charging, protection, slower charging, all that jazz, so that we can get the fastest speeds possible. After 10 minutes, we have 12% on the Motorola, 17 on the S21 Ultra, 30% on the Vivo, 36% on the Oppo, and 60% on the iQ, with the iQ still being the hottest and the Motorola still being the coolest. So as of right now, the hottest phone is the fastest charging phone, the iQ, and the coolest phone is the slowest charging phone, the Motorola Edge S. Let's see if they can both hold their own going forward within the test, because that means that the phone charging the fastest is damaging the battery over time and the one charging the slowest isn't since it's cooling down the most well talking about that the iq7 is actually clocked out now 18 minutes zero to 100 percent i have gotten 15 minutes before which is the advertised time though 18 minutes is still absolutely fantastic i was fiddling around with the phone when they first powered up 18 minutes is great 222.2 milliamp hour per minute of charging rate is absolutely phenomenal but it had a peak temperature of 48.6 degrees in celsius and ended off with 46.4 can the others do better than that or does the faster charging not really affect heat management? Now the Vivo X60 Pro Plus is sitting at 48.2 degrees in Celsius after a 25 minute interval there and the Motorola Edge S is now on 37%, Samsung 55%, 80% on the Vivo and 98% on the Oppo. And the Oppo is the coolest device still even though it has a 65 watt charging block, the second highest on the table right now, the second fastest here and it finishes 100% in 31 minutes. Now 31 minutes is certainly slower than 18 minutes though it does have a larger solid 4350 milliamps compared to the iQ's 4000 milliamps so you're getting a bigger battery and you're getting pretty fast charging still at 31 minutes are you really going to notice much of a difference between 18 and 31 minutes and you're getting much cooler temps ending off with a score of well temperature of 39.1 degrees in celsius as opposed to 46 and we have 48.6 as a peak on the iQ as opposed to 42.6 on the reno 52 minutes has passed now and the vivo x60 pro plus clocks out which is pretty good still pretty fast 55 watts though is there a big difference between 55 watts and 65 watts that we see on the oppo comparing to the vivo over here and the oppo has a slightly bigger battery meaning that the oppo is charging a lot quicker and it had cooler temps it didn't end off as cool as the vivo but it had a cooler peak temp and that is what is most important here the oppo had 140.3 milliamp hour per minute reading over here in terms of charging rate as opposed to the 80.8 of the vivo and the samsung clocks out 100 percent after one hour and eight minutes the best i've actually seen from the s21 ultra which is great and even lower milliamp hour permanent reading of 73.5 milliamps so the worst of the bunch here and its peak temperature was almost matching the iq's peak temperature even though there's pretty much a hundred watt difference between the two blocks you've also got to remember that the samsung has a thousand milliamp hour larger battery than the iq does so it's expected to take longer to charge but at such a low charging rate is it really worth having smaller slower charges when you're hitting pretty much the same peak temp and the motorola edge s finally says okay nick 
I am going to clock out here at one hour, 49 minutes. That is a ridiculous amount of time to wait for a full charge. But bear in mind that the phone is 5,000 milliamps, the same size as the Samsung though, 20 watts as opposed to 25 watts. I feel like it should have done a better job. But if you do use one of the battery features within the device, you can actually cap charging at 4,000 milliamps, charging up to 80% only and never passing that. And you would get a much better charging rate, but then you would get slightly shorter lasting battery life, pretty much matching the iQ7, but that wouldn't quite touch its great battery life at 5,000 milliamps, which is on par with Samsung's Galaxy S21 Ultra, which bear in mind, cost a hell of a lot more than the Motorola Edge S. Fifth place here, the Motorola Edge S with one hour and 49 minutes, slowest charging at 20 watts, largest battery at 5,000 milliamps. It's not the best charging. It's not the slowest I've seen before though. Fourth place here, the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra with an hour and eight Eight minutes pretty much 40 minutes quicker than the Motorola even though it only has five watts of extra charging in the same size battery third place the Vivo X60 Pro plus 52 minutes 55 watt charging 4200 milliamp hour battery much smaller than the previous two devices second place here is the Oppo Reno 5 Pro 65 watts charging 4350 milliamp hour battery in just 31 minutes great job on you Oppo and first place here still the crowned king of my channel of all time the Vivo IQ 7 just just 18 minutes though, I've seen it do it in 15, 18 is still great. 120 watt charging, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Now back to what we were saying at the start in terms of heat dissipation and charging speed. Yes, the iQ7 got the hottest at the end at 46.4 degrees in Celsius, meaning that it didn't cool down just before it finished charging so that it could achieve its fast speed. Also got to bear in mind that the iQ7 hit 222.2 milliamp hour per minute reading in its overall zero to 100% charge and it did the same in its first 50% doing it in just nine minutes at the bottom right of the screen there where all of the other devices were a lot faster in their 50% as opposed to their last 50% and overall charge. So like I was saying the iQ7 was the hottest at the end and the peak but by how much? The Galaxy S21 Ultra hit 47.9 degrees in Celsius at its peak which is really not far off the iQ7 and it has almost a hundred watt charging capabilities less than the iQ7. The Motorola Edge S has the worst charging speed here because of that 20 watt block and massive 5000 milliamp hour battery but that battery capacity is the same size as the Samsung and the Samsung only has 5 watt faster charging capabilities with the same battery capacity. This is because Motorola is trying to preserve battery life over time and that is why its end temp is the lowest here at 27.7 degrees in Celsius. This is something very similar to what Apple does and that is why we are getting such slow charging rates in its last 10% as you can see at the top of the device there 33 minutes to do just 10% at a rate of 15.2 milliamp hours per minute. So my question at the start, does it make a big difference in terms of battery longevity? Well, yes and no. Yes, the Vivo IQ7 should have slowed down at the end just a tad. I could have waited a minute or two longer for it to start cooling things down. But because it's such a short period of time, it doesn't really have the time to cool the phone down the way, say, for example, the Motorola Edge S does. The Motorola Edge S even has a setting within its phone to start trickling through charging after 80% to charge it slower to get it even cooler than this. I had that off charging this phone during during this test, but all of these devices do have some form of protection. You can even turn the super fast 120 watt charging off on the iQ7 and you only have to use it when you actually need to. It's awesome to know that that feature is there, but you don't necessarily always need it, especially if you're charging your device overnight. Now the Oppo for me is the sweet spot. 65 watt charging for me right now, looking at this set of phones here is the sweet spot. It had one of the lowest end temps over here, not as cool as the Vivo X60 Pro Plus and Motorola Edge S, but it did it in 31 minutes, meaning that that time frame to cool down at the end wasn't as big as you would see on the Vivo and on the Motorola. But the most important thing here is the peak temperature, how hot the phone gets throughout the test. And the Oppo had the coolest peak at 42.6 degrees in Celsius, which is six degrees cooler than the hottest phone on the table reaching that peak. I hope that this information was useful to you guys out there. If you have yet to do so, please make sure to smash that subscribe button. This is Technic and I'll see you in the next one.